Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Let's start with a joy song. If we will um, teach the world to sing, Rise as You Are Able. cell phones or silence them. This is just bringing back a memory. <clears throat> the, um, you know, I worked right at the Smithsonian Mall at the Department of Energy, and they would have, um, oh shoot, the big festival where they celebrate different countries. I can't think of the name of it. But anyway, there was... Um, there was a performance underneath a gigantic tent, and everyone was quiet. And then all of a sudden, you heard a cell phone. And it was this was way back when cell phones first came out, and so people were so annoyed, like, "Oh my gosh, who's got their cell phone? You know, who's got a cell phone anyway?" And it turns out it was part of the performance. It was on stage. Oh, yeah, so that, was, that was pretty neat. Thank you for letting me share. Okay, um, our. Guest musician today is Wendy Greer, and our one minute reader is Del Seiler. And so it's time for our reading. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Guten Morgen. Good morning. You got a double header this morning. There were two great philosophers. They're more or less secular, but um, I found this in our guidebook, our design, uh, design, divine time handbook, and it it just popped out at me and had every every intention of being read today. From E. Period Hannah. To have a true social consciousness means to have a sense of feeling or being harmonious, congenial, and appreciative towards all human beings, a sense of belonging to and being part of the society or neighborhood. It means one should be free of suspicions, resentments, and prejudices. It means to love your fellow man. To do that, you must have an understanding of why men behave as they do. You will see that some are at a low level of unfoldment towards their Christhood, <coughs> and others are in a, in an intermediate stage, and some are way, way far advanced. The latter ones deserve your appreciation. The former ones 
need your love and encouragement. The great American humorist Will Rogers is reported to have said, I never met a man I didn't like. That's probably his most famous quote. It, let your social consciousness grow naturally and logically out of your consciousness of the allness of God. A much more well-known uh, philosopher, rioter, and essayist, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, has the inner stillness. Let us then labor for an inward stillness, an inward stillness and an inward healing. That perfect silence when the lips and heart are still and we no longer entertain our own imperfect thoughts and vain opinions. <coughs> but God alone speaks in us and we wait in singleness of heart that we may know his will and in the silence of our spirits that we may do his will and do that <clears throat> only. Sounds a lot like divine science, doesn't it? Thank you. Thank you, Del. Okay, now let's have our opening hymn. Our first hymn is number 97, Abundant Life, and we will sing both verses. Please rise as you are able. yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Well, like I said, tomorrow is Labor Day, and Jesus said this after they had fed the 5,000. And being that it's Labor Day, I wanted to bring up the fact that Oregon was the first state to declare a national holiday, holiday for Labor Day. And Labor Day, of course, as you know, was a movement of the 1880s, a labor movement. 1887, New York was the first state to have a Labor Day parade. And I wanted to look at this aspect of rest. What does Jesus mean by, come by yourselves, let's go get some rest? What did he mean by that? So 
What do the mental health professionals say about rest and what we should be getting? And they, they've divided it down into several different little headings. Social rest. Well, that'd be like with friends and chatting. And I know some of you are so good at chatting after church service that you, you can get your social rest in. And then the mental rest. This is where you would read a book, go to a movie, and just sort of let your mind just sort of rest uh, without doing too much. And I'll have a word of caution here. Those of you who think you can multitask on this mental task, you cannot. They've been proven that multitasking does not work. Then there's physical rest where we actually sleep and nap and recharge our bodies. You know, Google is one of the great companies today, a tech company that everyone really scrambles to work for. And Google's ahead of its time a little bit. They have energy pods, they call them. It's where an employee can go get a 15 or 20 minute refreshing nap. That says something. And then we have the last category, spiritual rest. And this is where you pray or meditate. And there's a new order in science. It's called, it's called uh, neurotheology. It's where they study the theology as, the, the, as you're praying or meditating. They take CAT scans of your brain and see the frontal lobe and how it lights up and, and how it relaxes your body. And they can actually visualize this in, in the CAT scans. So tomorrow on our Labor Day, our day of rest, Keep in mind what Jesus said, come by yourself, come with me, and let's go rest. Would you follow me now in the orders of service as we read our divine statement of being? God is all, God is all both invisible and visible. One presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is a perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. I am the individualized expression of God, and I am the ever one, one perfect life, perfect life, and perfect Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm going to try my, my first song here is uh, a John Mayer song, and, which means there's a lot of guitar soloing going on that I can't do, so there's, there may be some humming. <laughs> and that's, that's all right. I like this song. I'm doing it anyway. So... <laughs> Silver lining, paint 
throws your heart to the ground. Love turns the whole thing around. No, it won't all go the way it should, but I know the heart of life is good. is good. Pain throws your heart to the ground. Love turns the whole thing around. I know it won't all go the way it should, but I know the heart of life is good. I know Makes your heart sore. Thank you. Now is the time in our service for our healing meditation. And I invite you to become quiet. I invite you to become quiet and to go within. And it's such a beautiful time here in the service where we get to turn our many cares, many concerns, many worries over to someone that can carry our burdens, who has promised to make our load lighter. Oh, Mother, Father, God, thank you for being amongst us, for being that perfect spirit, that perfect love. Mm -hmm. I know my heart has been heavy this week with the victims of Harvey, and I'm sure others in here have sure that thought. We ask that the peoples of Houston, Port Arthur, and Austin receive not only the monetary help they need, but also the spiritual help. <coughs> Father, thank you for being in my life, being in the life of others. As we hear the music today, the message today, please help open our hearts just a bit, touch a life, make a difference. all in your hands, Father. I hold in my hand pieces of paper with, with the worries and the concerns of others. And I ask that you bless these lives. And I know you will. In the next 90 seconds, I invite you to 
just let go. <clears throat> Take this time to turn it over to God. Labor not anymore. But come and rest now. We invited you, Father, into our hearts. Thank you for making a difference in our outlook, in our very nature. And it is so. Will you right now prayerfully recite the Lord's Prayer with me? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed is thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Thou give us this day our daily bread. Thou forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Thou lead us not into temptation, but dost deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever, forever, ever, ever. Amen. Last week, I started thinking about, you know, sometimes I might not be the only one to hope. Things happen in our lives where we go, oh my gosh, how is this going to ever work out? Oh, I hope this works out. It's so important to me. This has got to work out. You know, it's got to work out. It's my son involved. Or your daughter your husband or wife. It's got to work out or it's your health or your finances. Oh, it's just got to work out. It's got to. And I wanted to look at this just a little bit with you today. We'll examine it just a little bit. We'll try to look at it through the lens of divine science. In the book of Samuel, we, we can read about David. They say David had a harmonic voice when he sang that animals would gather around him. And the trees would even sway when he sang. He must have had a beautiful voice. And David, one of the things to take with you in divine science is you can learn or memorize certain scriptures. One I like is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lay down in the green pastures. He leaves me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me down the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I feel no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. They prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I anoint my head with oil. I cup for in a favor. Oh, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me the rest of my days. So I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You see, 
Well, David wrote this, Psalm 23. He was being chased by his father-in-law, King Saul. King Saul was terribly, terribly jealous of David. King Saul reminds me of the original person, you know, the adage, bring your friends close, keep your enemies closer. That's how King Saul reminds me. He even tried to marry off David to one of his daughters. He tried to marry off to the first daughter. That didn't work. So he did marry David off to his second daughter, Michelle. And even that made him jealous. King Saul sent David out into battle with the Philistines. And when he came back, the women sang a song and said, Saul's killed his thousands, David his ten thousands. That even made him more jealous. What do you do when it's just so important? When you need that answer? Saul tried to kill David. I read several different places. One place said 12 times, another place said 11, and another place said 6. So I'm going to pick the middle one, 11 times. He threw a spear at him. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You make a big lay down in the green pastures. You know, sometimes when this happens to us and we come to that place where we go, how can this ever work out? It's just got to work out. This is so important. It's got to work out. In June 4th, 1944, Supreme Allied Commander Dwight Eisenhower surrounded himself with his staff and said concerning Operation Overlord where he was going to attack the, uh, the beaches of Normandy. And he surrounded himself with his staff and he said, what does the weather look like? What's it look like? You see, they only had a four-day window to invade Normandy because of the tides. And if he didn't invade it in this four days, he was going to have to call it off. And General Eisenhower said, I can't do that. I've got all these men and equipment on a limb. That's the words he used. He said, I've got 156,000 troops, 4,000 landing craft and ships, all the supplies, and I think it was 195,000 sailors and shipment to ferry the people across the English Channel. Channel. Well, it didn't look good. There, there had been a bad weather for several days. A storm had moved in. So on June the 5th, he called another meeting. And he asked his weatherman at 9.45, he said, What's it look like? What's it look like, Mr. Meteorologist? What's it look like? This is so important. We could all be speaking German today. And he said to... General Eisenhower, it looks like we might have a small window. The clouds, the rain might stop, and the, and the sea swells might stop just enough so that we can land. This man had to take all this on, this important decision to change the world. What do you do when the decisions are so important? Well, he said, let's go. It just took a few hours, let's go. So on June 6, 1944, he launched D-Day. On the 5th, he telegraphed President Roosevelt. President Roosevelt got on the radio over the airways on June the 6th and let the American people know that the invading forces were moving. And he did it in the form of a prayer. Matter of fact, General Eisenhower had delivered to each sales, each sailor and soldier a little pamphlet before they sailed off. And it, it just said how much he put his trust in them, how brave he thought they would be. And he asked them, he said, We bless this with God Almighty.
This is so important. We need the answers so much. Will everything be okay? Will it all work out? Well, we know now I did, but do you know where we, we have the D-Day Memorial in Bedford. I don't know if you know how that came to being. You see, when they hit the beaches, they took with them 34 boys from Bedford. They call them the Bedford Boys. 34. They were in the local National Guard. 18, 19, 20-year-olds. And when they hit those beaches, 19 of them died on that beach. Did not even get off that beach. I did the math. That's 56% died right on that beach, on that sand. Is it going to be okay? Is it going to be okay? Well, in that group of 34, there were two sets of twins from Bedford. One was Roy and Ray Stanley. Roy was killed on the beach, Ray went on to live a normal life. And there was another set of twins, the Hobacks. It was Raymond and Bedford Hoback. Both died on that beach that day. Matter of fact, four more soldiers from the Bedford group died later in that week. But I'm talking just on that sand, 19 died, 56%. <clears throat> the D-Day Memorial. The movie Saving Private Ryan was based conceptually on these brothers being lost. Steven Spielberg, as you know, was the director. He donated a million dollars to the D-Day Memorial. And interestingly, Charles Schultz, the creator of Peanuts, donated a million also. 56% of the people. Is it going to be okay? Is it going to be all right? In 1855, I'm sorry, 1852, there was an English rhyme that we started learning. It was, row, row, row your boat, gently down the stream. Merely, 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 life is but a dream. Row, row, row your boat, gently down the stream. And that makes me think metaphysically about our lives. Could you not say that we're like rowing down the stream? And the landscape we look at is the things we run across in life and we look at. Oh, of course, we try to navigate around those rapids up ahead and maybe that submerged log. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. I wanted to look at, through the lens of divine science. But what do we do? And the question is, is everything going to be okay? Will it be all right? Some of the health professionals tell us, well, get a good night's sleep. Eat good. Have a good diet. Get plenty of exercise. But I wasn't looking for that. I wanted to look at it through the divine science lens. So I came up with vitamin three. And we're going to put a tool belt on. And we're going to put our three in this tool belt. Firstly, I think we should have a grateful heart. Oh, Father, Mother, God, thank you for blessing my son, blessing my life. I have a house, a car, a job, and moving me closer to you. We should have a grateful heart. 
Secondly, we should reap what we sow. We should remember that law. I was reading a, a book a, a week or so ago. I want to get this right for you verbatim if I can, if I can remember it. It's the thoughts and beliefs you rely and deny. Bring us our experiences of pleasure or pain, light or shadow. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that what we give attention to, what we're thinking about, what we give energy to, is going to be our experience. If you want to have a miserable life and life of discord, carry a shoulder, carry a, a chip on your shoulder. Be argumentative. Be unwilling to hear another side's political views. If you want a life of happiness and ease, do something loving for someone and don't tell anybody about it. Be a friend. Chat. So let's put that in our, in our tool belt. So we've got a grateful heart. And we've got Reap what you sow. We're going to put those two in our tool belts right now. And the third, I'm not going to put a name to it yet. I want to describe it to you, and you can feel it along with me. Several years ago, I was driving my car, and that question came up to me. Oh, this is so important. How's it going to work out? This is me. It's important. How can this ever work out? And then I thought, oh, yeah, I'll give it to God. It's yours, God. And ten minutes later, oh, this is so important. This is so important, God. Oh, yeah, I just gave it to you. I'm sorry. It, it's yours again, God. And ten minutes later, oh, this is so important, God. What am I going to do? This is me. Oh, oh. And there it hit me. Row, row, row your boat. that I was unwilling and thinking that if I was not so invested in this, if I was not so worried with this, if I was not so gnashed up inside with this, why should my mother, father, Carl care? Why should this divine spirit care? Why should any of this happen unless I am so wound up in this, so invested? And then it occurred to me, row, row, row your boat. Let go, let God. I've done all I could. No sense worrying about it anymore. Let go, let God. So we can put these three things in our tool belts now. So when that big question comes, how is this ever going to work out? Is it going to be okay? Get out of your tool belt. Get a grateful heart, reap what you sow, and let go, let God. And that one, I think, is the one that counts the most, let go, let God. And I will tell you from experience that everything, all, everything, will be okay. It will be just fine. Go in prayer with me. Mother, Father, God, thank you for reminding me to let go, let God. Thank you that you're in my heart, in my life. We pray for this in Christ's nature. Amen. John, that was a wonderful message. And uh, ran across a little song here that um, we 
kind of go through life just working hard, uh, rushing, rushing, grasping, <coughs> chasing, trying to become happy, trying to find happiness. And um, I think sometimes we miss all the small things really close by. We have everything we need to be happy right here and right now, and we miss some of the most beautiful, tiny little miracles of life. And, uh, and this song taught me that, so let's give it a try. It's not that unusual when everything is beautiful. It's just another ordinary miracle today. The sky knows when it's time to snow. Don't need to teach a spree seed to grow. It's just another ordinary miracle today. some of your own. Isn't it remarkable, like every time a raindrop falls, it's just another ordinary miracle today. Birds and when I have their flame, they always make it home by spring. It's just another ordinary miracle today. When you wake up every day, please don't throw your dreams away. Hold them close to your heart, cause we are all a part of the ordinary miracle. Just work out after all. It's just another ordinary miracle today. The sun comes up and shines so bright, disappears again at night. It's just another ordinary miracle today. attention and fascinating stories and the way you wrap it together with what we believe in. So thank you. Okay, now it's time for blessing of the gifts. The ushers will come up front. <clears throat> gifts in our hands, um, we can um, say the uh, blessing of the gifts together. Today, I acknowledge God, omnipresent, as the source of all good, as the source of my good. With this acknowledgement, I accept his will, which is abundance in every aspect of my life. 
I release all thoughts of lack and limitation, and I am open and receptive to the increased flow of abundance to me right now. I joyfully accept the gifts of life and give freely of the special gift that I am. Through me, God omnipresent blesses and multiplies this gift for all. Thank you, dear God. And I'm going to pass around the uh, prayer basket. This will start. half hour sleep this morning, so we should all be cheery and ready to go. Okay, uh, birthday Sunday, we have Chris, Bob Brooks, and Marita. Does anybody else want to say something? Let's see your birthday. picnic again for just to celebrate uh, and it's going to be at the Oak Grove Park where we had Memorial Day picnic. If you have not told myself or Kate that you're coming please do so today so we can have the right amount of hamburgers and hot dogs and not have not enough and then not have a whole lot left over. So if you haven't told us please do so um, before you leave today. Uh, I think Jerry's going to get there early and get the table but we usually get there around 11 30 and probably eat around 12 30 or so whenever the grill masters, whoever they may be, Doug and Rick, I guess, uh, get the get the food ready. So, <laughs> Rick, I think you'll probably have to to make sure he does it right. I'm coming with the tray. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, uh, please come out, and we've got uh, like already like 25 or 26 people signed up. So it's good. We have a we have a good time. We enjoy it. It's it's good bonding time. So. Uh, and the cost is five dollars. The covered cost of the hamburger and hot dogs and the the bread and, and everything else. Everybody brings a, a dish, and then uh, we we just have a good time. So please uh, join us tomorrow for that. Um, not tomorrow night, but next Monday night, the eleventh. Nancy will be starting back her Monday night class. Did you want to say anything about that? So um, for all of you who are in class. Um if you, it's going to the first, the it's the fourth class in the series, and um, it is lesson seven and eight. Um, so if you would just, and, and actually eight is a review. So if you would just re, uh, read over seven, lesson seven and eight, then you know, we'll be ready to discuss. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we're certainly glad that we're going to be back to having our class on Monday night. So uh, looking forward to that. Uh, also, in your orders of service, uh, we talked about it the other week uh, that we've now switched in to help Oak Grove, Plaza, uh, Oak Grove School. They asked us to help with the um, uh, backpack, snack a pack lunch uh, that they take home on weekends. We've printed out a list so everybody can take it home. And Martha has made a box for the front and the back uh, to um, put, your, put the food in. Last year, well, the last couple of years, we've done like toothpaste and stuff, but they asked us this year to help with the um, backpack. Uh, so it's just so these kids can have some food to take home for the weekend to snack on. Uh, sometimes, um, as we're told, this is all they get for the weekend. So anyhow, we have a list of stuff. <coughs> just take the list home with you. We'll also have it listed on the bulletin boards. Also, I'm going to have them posted on the website, so it'll be there. So if you ever have any question as to what, what they need, uh, they ask us to kind of stick to what's on this this uh, list here. So and Martha's already taken what two boxes two boxes of food over there. So we appreciate your help, but this is going to be an ongoing project 
the whole year. So uh, anyhow, we appreciate your help with that. Uh, also, uh, one other thing that we've announced several times, but we, we're connect, collecting your change for the church. Uh, so we have a box back there. So anytime you want to empty your pockets and put your change in there, we'll, we'll take it. So um, did you want to, did you still have any, are you changing your class this week, a week till Tuesday night or something? Yes. Okay. Tuesday night. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, Wednesday night will be Tuesday night this week only. Uh, we're getting together on Tuesday night at 5. So, thank you. Sorry, there's so much going on. I'm doing my calendar in my head. Okay. So our, what's our closing hymn? Our closing hymn is number 53, You'll Never Walk Alone. <laughs>